to understand the future unit, to understand the entire history of, of where things came from. And if we think about humans, we're just a tool using species. So we're using a hammer to extend our fist or a knife to extend our teeth. If those things break, we can evolve outside of ourselves. So really the, the nature of human history is geography based. What can you do with the things around you? What can you eat? What can you build? How do you shelter yourself? And that creates your culture, that creates your language, that creates your rituals, that creates your customs, that creates your clothing, that everything is about that. And so when we have a globalized culture in which we try to have the idea that geography doesn't exist, you know, we end up in a lot of condos, which are undifferentiated junk spaces in which there's, you know, there's no culture, there's no identity, there's no relation. Um, everything's kind of flattened and in this kind of globalistic sense. Um, so, you know, living in Portland, Oregon is nice because I'm down the street from a VHS rental place. I, there's DVD shop. There's, um, I run a cassette tape label out here where we make cassette tapes. Um, and the reason why, <laughs> I, I mean, it sounds silly, but the reason why is to be familiar with the physicality of technology, that it comes from somewhere that, um, you know, to sit by a tape dubber machine from the thrift store uh, while your tapes get dubbed um, is interesting because you can, you can see where it came from. And so if we try to think about the future with a real footing in history, we can see what could happen because at the end of the day, Spotify isn't going to be around. Computers aren't going to be around. We're going to have these, these shiny objects that future archaeologists, if we get future archaeologists, will say, look at these worship stones. They won't necessarily understand that they were connected to anything. So what culture is going to exist, you know, in a hundred years, a thousand years, you know, we'll have a bunch of rare minerals in shiny stones in a landfill, but books, cassettes, vinyl, <laughs> all these things will actually exist, CDs even, and they'll be pretty readable, right? Vinyl being probably the most uh, readable. You can put it onto a you know, big disc. Uh, and then I'm really obsessed with the Long Now project. And what they have is an absolutely analog 10,000 year clock where they're really obsessed with how do we, how do we work with the physicality? And I think it's also important to study analog things because you don't skip steps. <laughs> if you're going to no. rebuild a car from scratch, you can't just press a button and have it change like we're used to on the web and even deploying something on a server as a programmer like you press a button all these things break and you can't see them breaking 